So here is our API that we were given. And before we start consuming it, let's make sure that it actually is working correctly. So let's start the project. And of course, this is just an API, so nothing is visible on the page, but we can just enter a simple URL from our API calls. So let's start with API slash books. And you can see that we get a JSON of all the book data. Now let's do the same for authors. And uh, you can see the data is here. Let's try countries. And again, we get some sample data there as well. So the API works. Now, of course, in real life, the API would be hosted somewhere in the cloud or a server, and we would access it via an HTTP URL rather than localhost. But it really is irrelevant for our purposes, and we can easily simulate it in our own local development environment by separating the API from our graphical user interface. We will simply create a separate project for consuming the API, and we will treat the API as a third party's API hosted in the cloud. Meaning, we will not make any adjustments to the API itself at all. So I'll close the browser and let's go to Solution Explorer. And I will add new project. And we want it to be .NET Core type of project. And we select ASP.NET Core Web Application. And I'm going to call it Book GUI for Graphical User Interface. Now here, we could start with one of the scaffolded templates, but because this is a tutorial and I hope that you're here to learn, so to get the most out of this, we'll start from an empty project. And we do not need HTTPS and we do not need any authentication. So I'll click OK. And you can see the second project has been created. So let's see what we have when we run this. And as it turns out, we get nothing. And that's because we are actually still running the API and not our new project. And I can prove that. Let's just type slash API books. And here's the data again. So what we need to do is to make both the API and our new project run simultaneously. That's because the API needs to actually run before we can access it. Again, think of it as if it was hosted in the cloud. If the hosting server was down, you wouldn't be able to access it, right? And it's the same here. So to run the API and our new project, I'm going to right click the solution, select properties, and here in the startup project, you can see that we have the book API project, which is the API itself. I'm going to select multiple startup projects. And we are going to start the API. And we're going to start our new project as well. So now we will start both of these together. Click apply and OK. So let's try again. And now we get two browsers open. So the first one oh, down here on the background, that's the API browser window, and we can disregard it. And here in this browser, we see hello world, and that is our new project running. Also note that the browsers have two different localhost addresses. And down here in the taskbar, you can see that we have our IIS Express but when I right click it, you can see that we now run two servers, one for the API and one for the new project book GUI project. So both of these projects now run. And one more thing I need to still do is to go to the startup file of our new project and configure a few things for our app. 